What's up guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's what the fitness time. Let's get them. What the f And this week we have a submission from Instagram. I can't give it to one person because about 80 people sent it to me, but it's a video of George Farah, who is an IFBB pro bodybuilder and uh, coaches bodybuilders as well. We've had little debates online before. George seems like a reasonably nice guy, but there is a video of him talking about flexible dieting and I have not watched it yet. This is gonna be my first time watching it. Live reaction. I'm gonna to try to make it through 30 seconds at a time before giving my thoughts. I am assuming it's going to be a lot of the same straw man arguments that most people make regarding flexible dieting. A calorie isn't just a calorie, or you can't tell me that a thousand calories of M&Ms is the same as a thousand calories of chicken breast, but let's watch it and see what happens. What's up everyone, how are you today? I hope all is well. Well, today I'm here to talk to you about, so many clients keep asking me about flexible diet. You know what they mean by flexible diet that you know they can eat as long as they're meet their micronutrient you know with their calories intake so they can have cookies or big mac and stuff listen i hate to tell you this but first of all you guys need to stop following you know everybody every bodybuilders that is telling you oh look what i'm eating stuff this is genetic you guys you know you can't you can't just have genetic like these guys not to mention you know we use so many synthetic hormone and stuff. I mean, who we're bullshitting, you know what I'm saying? So if for an average guy, you know, like I'm giving him a diet to keep asking him about flexible diet. Listen, flexible diet is not for you. Flexible diet is not for anybody. As a matter of fact, flexible diet, what they mean by that, like eating a burger or cookie or whatever, it, it's, it's not going to help you. What it's going to do, you know, at the end, down the road, is going to actually mess up your your intestinal bacteria, you know, your flora. And that's when you're gonna have more problem, losing weight, gaining muscles, etc. So let me get this straight. He's talking about bodybuilders. We inject all these hormones, but we're worried about a Big Mac changing our gut microflora. But we're not worried about the tons of exogenous drugs that we are injecting into our body. No, we need to worry about flexible dieting. Just, just want to point that out real quick. By the way, there's no, like there is evidence that a high saturated fat diet can change your gut microflora, uh, impact it negatively. That's mostly due to the bile secretion that's need to break down saturated fat. Uh, it seems like some of the products produced from that bile may have a negative impact on the gut microflora. But if you're doing flexible dieting correctly, you're not just having Big Macs all the time because no one has the macros to where they could just eat nothing but Big Macs and actually reach their body composition goals. Is he saying that like, if, you, if you're able, like for me, I can eat 3,500 calories a day, hit all my targets. If I have 500 calories left over, you're telling me that a Big Mac is somehow gonna kill me? Oh, oh by the way, I'm Natty, worried, more about injecting with a bunch of exogenous drugs that have not had the long-term side effects studied versus like every once in a while having a Big Mac or a treat. But anyway, I digress. We shall move on. And I, hey, good, good for me. I made it like a minute and 10 seconds. That's, that's pretty good for me. So please, you guys, enough with this flexible diet things. You know what I mean? Try to stick with anything you can as nature as possible because the more, you know, the more you eat natural... Appeal to naturalism fallacy? Uh, you know, not necessarily, like I said, people go oh, organic this, but you know, the more you eat, you know, produce, the more you eat good stuff, the better off you are going to be. Trust me, you guys, for gaining muscles or losing fat, enough with this flexible diet. You guys drove me insane. Everybody flexible diet, flexible diet. And you know, and then when I tell somebody eat some fruit, I'm getting... I'm getting bombarded with people who well, how they can eat fruit is full of sugar. Listen, when the last time you heard somebody was eating so much fruit and end up, oh my God, he's having so many problems. No, we're not talking about juice. So I actually agree with him here. There's a lot of people out there who are like, don't eat fruit because fructose. So many obese people out there, oh my God, I just can't stop eating apples. Oh, if I could just stop eating apples. Uh, no, he's 100% right there. 
And I think his message overall, like so far, it's not that I would disagree with it. It's just it lacks context. And this is a problem when you, when you are a purveyor of information and people trust you, you have to provide context. So I would say, you know, eating, trying to eat most of your food from unprocessed foods or minimally processed foods is probably good. Not because food processing has like some inherently evil thing that's going to give you cancer or whatnot but because ultra processed foods just aren't very satiating and it's very easy to overeat on them. Very easy. I mean, in fact, in Kevin Hall's study of a, a metabolic ward, when they provided either people with minimally processed food or ultra processed food, people spontaneously increased their caloric intake by 500 calories a day on the ultra processed food diet. So again, I, I think that that's relatively good advice. However, when you tell people, no, you can't have M&Ms or you can't have cookies, or you can't ever have a Big Mac. People make these black and white associations of this and what happens, and I see it happen, and I see it happen in bodybuilders, is they don't have it, don't have it, don't have it, don't have it. Oh, but it's my cheat day! And then they absolutely go nuts. In fact, I was scheduled to have a debate one year with a uh, NPC bodybuilder who did kind of the traditional eat clean, fuck that means, and then have a cheat meal once per week. And my opening argument, he pulled out of the bait, by the way. I never pull out. My opening argument was going to be the fact that I looked at his Facebook, because he put it up on, because he, you know, once you like create these associations with food, you put food on a pedestal. So he would always post his weekly cheat. And I added up all the calories from his weekly cheat. And then I added up all the calories that I got from junk food, just having it moderately throughout the week. And guess what? He was actually having more calories from junk food on his cheat day than I was by having it moderately throughout the week, just as part of my everyday diet. So you're telling me that binging on junk food on a cheat day is fine, but fitting it into a diet in uh, balanced proportions is not. Now I'm not saying George particularly because he hasn't made that claim yet. However, I've seen many of his clients and I know their behaviors and I've, I've seen them at shows and I've seen them after shows. And if he's saying, well, never have this, you can never ever have it, good luck. Let me know how that works out for you and enjoy your eating disorder. We're talking about go grab an apple, go grab an orange. You have fiber, you have pectin, you have so many things in it. It's all the nutrient in it. I can't believe actually people DMing me why you tell people to eat fruit is bad. Seriously? Now fruit is bad? My God, where are we doing wrong here? You know, so the French fries and cookies and all that sugar and crap and processed food, that's not bad, but you guys attacking me over fruit. Listen, man. I don't think those are the same people. I don't think anybody in the flexible dieting community is like, don't you dare eat that apple. That's bad for you. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's making that argument. Um, I think he is uh, taking an argument from one group and comparing it to an argument from another group. Enjoy your life. Eat your fruit. Have whatever you want. Don't listen to people. Okay. Wait, and I'm not want. saying, listen, I'm perfect. Hey, I just had something, you know, a couple of days ago, I went with the family and I had a beautiful, nice, you know, bowl of ice cream. Every once in a while, we're human. But the bottom line, please, man, start sticking with nature. So it's not okay to have this stuff except when it's okay, but I can't give you a metric for that. Okay. The more natural food you have, the better off you guys are going to be. Trust me. I'm not, I'm not talking because, well, you know, he's George Fair. No, but seriously, everybody listens to, you know, like everybody's expert right now. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is expert. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but at least I'm studying. I'm still trying to learn so I can pay it forward so I can help people. You know, it, I, you know, I, I can't even explain to you, you know, how important it is to use your food as medicine, you know, rather than later on using medicine as food. Seriously, you guys, I love you all. God bless you and we'll talk soon. Peace. So I think I know what he was trying to say, but I don't know anybody that like sits down to a plate of syringes and has medicine as food, but regardless. So it's actually not as bad of a video as I thought it was going to be. Like, honestly, uh, I, mo I would say at least half of his advice was relatively good. It was kind of like the same thing over and over, eat more natural food. I, I, I tire of the appeal to naturalism just because like what, what, what about nature makes it superior? 
everything's chemicals at the end of the day. We shouldn't be focusing on whether something's natural or not. We should be focusing on what are the inherent properties of that particular compound. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it somewhere in between? That sort of thing. I'm gonna side rant now, so I'm gonna stop. But I think the message of minimally processed food, for the most part, is pretty good. But there needs to be some context of, hey, you can still enjoy treats and whatnot. It just needs to be within the confines of what are your goals? Meaning, if you're a competitor, like let's say you're a 100 pound female getting on the Olympia stage for bikini and you're down to 1100 calories per day, well, yeah, you're probably not gonna wanna have a Big Mac because there's no way you're gonna hit your macros by having you know five, half of your calories come from a Big Mac. But by the same token, if I've got somebody like, for example, me when I was in a gaining phase and I was up to like almost 4,000 calories a day, try eating 4,000 calories a day from minimally processed food. Your stomach is going to be so distended from the fiber intake that you're gonna wanna die. It's horrible. You're also, enjoy your gas, by the way. So in that aspect, actually having some processed food can be a benefit because it can be less satiating and enable you to get more calories in. So again, this stuff depends on people's goals. It depends on the context. Just demonizing food is bad or good. is not a great idea. There needs to be context there. And, and once again, I point out, they're worried about all this processed food, but apparently the chemicals from, you know, anabolic drugs is totally fine. Like that's, that's okay. So anyways, I think a lot of this is not necessarily George's fault because the people who are coming to him are probably showing him people eating like their macros from candy and George gets the impression that that's what everybody who does flexible dieting does. They just fill up their macros all with junk food, which in reality is not the case. Just like people, when I get stuff, it's always like the most extreme nut cases in the fitness industry. And I have to remind myself that that is not the majority of people. So I actually was a little bit more ramped up for this video. And now after watching it, I wanna say that I think George's message was mostly okay, but it just lacks context and lacks nuance. So yeah, uh, this is the kinder, gentler lane now, I suppose, for what the fitness, but don't worry. I'm sure we'll have some some fuck, some fuck fuckery that'll come in and, and I'll, I'll rip it. But uh, you know, as far as uh, George Farrar goes in that particular video, it could have been worse. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope some of my explanations made sense and put more context around this sort of stuff. And I will catch you guys next week.